do you want to test your electronic skills and see if you can build a bad leveling sensor? Let's try to do this together. I wanted to make an inexpensive bed leveling uh, system, so I got myself one of these and then I designed a bracket and uh, I got all the electronics that is needed, which is basically this one. I made it myself with uh, scavenged parts from uh, dead electronic boards, so that's uh, something pretty easy to do. The sensor itself, I bought this from AliExpress and it came, for, it came from something more than two euros, so it's basically nothing. And all the rest of the parts, they've been lying around, uh, scavenged from boards I have uh, around. I got one of these. These are breadboards. You can buy them pretty much everywhere. This comes from uh, Obi King. It's a very small one. It can be broken down in four pieces, and uh, one of these pieces is more than enough. The heart of all this is this small chip here, which is an optocoupler. Uh, I decided to, to do an, uh, a system with an optocoupler. There's, of course, you can use uh, also a resistance bridge. Uh, but the reason why I decided to go for the optocoupler is that if you have one of the resistance breaking down for any reason, uh, then you can uh, run the risk of uh, damaging your, your board. So I decided to go for this option instead. Now, all this comes with a big disclaimer. Do this at your own risk. You can end up damaging your board and you can end up damaging your printer on or you can also uh, hurt yourself if you don't know uh, absolutely what you're doing. So this doesn't require any specific uh, skills, so basic soldering skills, a, a soldering iron of some kind. I have a very basic one uh, as well, so nothing pretty fancy. I'm not an electronic engineer, so uh, I have, uh, I'm a do-yourself kind of uh, person when it comes to electronics. I use this uh, tiny board to put it together because uh, I like the fact that this can be disconnected and uh, you know, in case uh, I have a problem with uh, the sensor or I need to or I want to upgrade something, I can always, I can always go back to it uh, without having to do it all uh, again together. But you can also solder the basic components together uh, without any breadboard and uh, that will run just fine. So uh, as we said, what you need, uh, basic soldering equipment and then you will need Arduino, IDE and a bootloader. So you have to have a bootloader in your printer, so I got one in my Ender 3. Uh, Michael at Teaching Tech has a great video, you, you will get the link and uh, I recommend you to follow it. Um, I recommend to upgrade the firmware of the Ender 3 anyway because uh, you know there's a bit of a debate but uh, most of the printers come without thermal runaway protection which is a function you want to have especially if you're running a printer unattended. So that alone would be a good uh, reason to go for a bootloader and uploading a brand new firmware. Uh, but in case you want to do upgrades as well, this is another uh, go-to option, so you have to do this. Um, there's basically different options out there. Uh, all, of, all of it is based on Marlin, so uh, you can get a fresh Marlin uh, uh, configuration file, you can get N3 configuration files from the internet, and you can get TH3D, uh, the, the, the TH3D uh, already comes with uh, their option to run uh, EZBL e or uh, whatever it's called and uh, you can run that even if you're not running their product. It is all based on uh, freeware so uh, and Marlin itself is open source. So it also it, it all depends if you you know if you want or if you feel like uh, you have an obligation to uh, buy their stuff if you want to use TH3D or, or not that's uh, entirely up to you. So let's get this started and let's see how uh, to put all this together. We're just going to use basic tools uh, for uh, this job and uh, we need to remove uh, first the wheel of the X carriage. You do this with the Allen key and then uh, with the spanner that comes with the printer. You take that away and uh, after doing that you can install the support. That's uh, This is my support. Uh, I designed it and it's available on Thingiverse, link in the description. It also acts as a flag for the X uh, axis stop in my design uh, um, to uh, fit uh, stepper motor dampers uh, if you have press fit pulleys. So we're going to put the first screw in and then we fit back the wheel in the reverse order. 
We're not going to tighten it yet because we need to remove the second wheel as well. Unfortunately, to take away the second wheel screw, we will have to remove the extruder from um, its uh, support. So we work again here with the wheel. We take it out. Very simple to do. Just take out all the parts. And the next thing we have to remove uh, first the fun shroud. It's just two small screws here to take off. And when we have removed the shroud, we go on removing the extruder from its place. Just lay it down carefully uh, on the build plate. You don't want to damage the nozzle or the build surface as well. At this point, you can remove the screw and then you put the bracket in place and uh, you assemble back the wheel in its place and you can also tighten the other one. This support includes um, the flag that activates the sensor. You will see it uh, in a second. And I also made it a bit thinner than the previous one. So uh, the lock nuts bite into the screws a bit better. Now we put back the extruder and uh, you can also take this chance to do some maintenance to it. I, I've done it offline uh, of the video, uh, taking, a bit out, uh, taking out a bit of the plastic. Um, so you can take that chance to do it. Be careful when you fit back the fun shroud, there's two screws. The small one goes uh, on the left uh, in the bottom corner while the other one goes into the top corner. You need to put the smaller one on the bottom otherwise it will uh, interfere with the x-axis gantry. You tighten it and then everything is uh, nice and smooth. Now we take care of the cable, we, we use some uh, cable ties uh, to uh, fit it back in place. We're following, we're threading it together with the other cables. And we're following the same route. Uh, make sure that the wire is long enough, in my case uh, no problem to go all the way down. And then uh, when we have done it, we're going to uh, cut away the remaining ends of the cable ties and uh, I'm using the tool that comes with the printer to do the job. The next thing we have to turn the printer uh, upside down and then we are threading the cables uh, through the electronics enclosure. And I'm also repurposing the original cable that comes with the printer. I'm not using it for the 24 volts because uh, there's several reports uh, that say that uh, connectors are unreliable. In this case, very low power going through it, so that's perfect for this purpose. Make sure you disconnect your mains power when, work with, when you work with electronics. I've already uh, assembled my wires in the, in, the, in the power supply, and that is done for me, so I just have to connect uh, the two ends of the connectors together. This is the core of the design and everything is uh, going into this uh, small chip which is an optocoupler as we said. So this is the diagram of uh, the electronics we're going to put in place. The main point here is the optocoupler. I'm using an FL817C. It has four pins, one, two, three and four obviously. And pin one is the one that is uh, represented by the small um, circle on the packaging of um, the, the chip. So you start with that one and then uh, the one next to it is uh, the second uh, pin of the diode, while the other two are three and four of uh, the collector and the emitter of the, of the transistor. And you have to connect that too to the machine, to the board and stops, um, because that will act as our switch. Uh, you see my soldering skills are pretty basic, I would also say a bit lousy. And I have also put some uh, header pins uh, for DuPont connectors. Don't forget to package it in uh, some kind of uh, insulation. You can use a shrink uh, tube or anything else that uh, works for you. Um, I'm using some electrical tape. You just want to isolate uh, all the solder from uh, the metal of the frame uh, to avoid shorts. Now you will have to connect the three wires coming from the sensor to the little board. So you're using the brown and the black wires connecting to the small board. And then the blue one you have to connect with the negative pole coming from the power supply. And to do this I'm using uh, just this, uh, um, I don't know the English word for this, but uh, you know, it's one of these uh, 
electrical things to use to tie wires together. Now you fit the DuPont connectors coming from the end stop of the board and this is it. And this brings us to the conclusion of the first part of the tutorial where we've gone through how to set up the electronics and uh, create a small circuit board and how to install the sensor in the printer. Um, as you have seen, it's uh, nothing particularly difficult to do and uh, this will bring uh, very big benefits to your printing experience. In the next part, we're going to look into um, setting up Marlin to have the sensor do its magic and so we're good to go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe and until next time.